Hi there, my name's Steve, and this is my electric car. Um, this may look suspiciously like a Porsche uh, 914, which it is, a 1971 Porsche 914. But it was uh, converted into an electric car, and, and I'm going to show you how in just a moment. The Porsche 914 is a unique car in that uh, it's small and has a, a great deal of trunk space, which makes it ideal for an electric car conversion, particularly with uh, uh, the bigger lead-acid batteries that need a lot of space. Uh, right now we're looking into what used to be the engine compartment. And now that we have a, a smaller electric engine, which I'll be showing you in a moment, uh, that left space to put uh, nine golf cart size batteries inside this case and hopefully you'll take my word for it that that is what is in there. As you can see the car is a convertible. There is a small top uh, called a Targa top um, which can be placed uh, on it during the colder months. Now let's move to the front trunk which uh, used to contain the gas tank and was otherwise uh, uh, available for storage. And now uh, nine other batteries. Um, I believe it's four on the top and five on the bottom in the case there. Uh, have replaced the gas tank and taken up most of the rest of the space. Uh, what we also have here is the charger unit. This folds down like so. Um, and uh, down here is the DC to DC converter. And what that does is allow you to use a regular car battery um, to do the things that the regular car battery did on the vehicle before the electric engine was placed in it. There really isn't much more uh, in the front other than uh, some ventilation areas. And uh, these contain some small fans which run and, and keep the battery unit uh, from overheating. In the front of the car here is the uh, charge plug. Uh, you simply plug the charger into there and then into the wall. Uh, and you can charge it overnight and you'll have a full charge by morning. This is the uh, the rear trunk which for the most part contains just two more batteries bringing our total up to 20 6 volt standard lead acid golf cart batteries. Obviously if uh, you wanted to spend the money on lithium batteries um, or if they get cheaper in the future you would have a lot more space in the car. It would be a lot easier to convert really any car uh, to an electric car since uh, the limiting step at the moment is, is uh, battery storage space. I'll try and give you a look at the electric engine here coming under the car and I don't know how visible this will be. Oh fine. So that red uh, cylindrical uh, object there is the engine. This is an electric engine. It's vastly smaller than the uh, regular combustion engine. Uh, so that allowed us to put more batteries in place of uh, the, the old engine. And as you might be able to see, the transmission behind that is hooked up to the engine, just a, in, in a similar way to uh, the way it was hooked up with the combustion engine. There's a special um, hub uh, that allows that connection to occur. Uh, because of the uh, significant extra weight uh, due to the addition of the batteries, Heavy-duty shocks were put in to the car, and that uh, seems to take care of uh, the, the weight problem. 
Uh, this device also underneath the car is called a controller. Uh, this is a necessary uh, device for any electric car and this uh, basically controls the amount of uh, electricity that is uh, put out uh, to the electric engine. It's a Curtis controller. All right, if you'd like more information about um, this conversion or how to do one yourself or where to get uh, the products, etc., uh, you can go to my website, which is uh, Electric Vehicle Project dot blogspot dot com and uh, that would be a good place to get you started thanks a lot now let's uh, take it for a ride <laughs>